What are you doing? Be quiet. Oh, you miserable. Rooster, what time is it? Let's want to sleep in a little bit. Seven o'clock. <laughs> Come on, jump, jump. Anything better? Try to get another hour of sleep or try to go fishing with Chris? Go get him. Go tell him to shut up. Over here. Ugh. You're dead. Oh, where to even start? Cuffy. That's where I should start. I'm just gonna put all the wet stuff in a big wet pile. I don't know what happened, but I picked like the wrong tarp for Chris's tarp, so it was good that he was like, I'm gonna sleep inside the cabin last night. If you're just tuning in, this is day two. You might want to start at the beginning of this series. Check out that playlist linked in the description below where you'll find the first two episodes of the build and day one, the episode before this when we hit the water and started our adventure out here on the lake. As well as a few side episodes that build out the Waterworld adventure. I'm Zachary Fowler and this is Waterworld 2.0, the seven day survival challenge pirate ship edition. That was nuts, huh? Yeah. Leaving civilization for parts unknown. Be gone. Lord, keep us safe. Fireball, Captain! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's bigger than the ones yesterday. Between Chris, my first mate, Butter, my dog, and our rooster fricassee, we're heading out to survive for seven days of adventure in this world of water. It's crazy, it's just as far as the eye can see, like everywhere I moved to. Oh, nailed it. All right. There we go. Nice, oh, more mayflies. They like the side of that jug for some reason. Inside of our water purifier. It's still hot, even with that. Mm, it's good though. Oh, I gotta break this down and uh, we'll hit the uh, hit the water. So now that I got my tarp flipped over, you can see my setup. I got my hammock just like the first day, but the tarps go onto these outriggers right there to the eye on the outrigger, and that pulls the tarp out. It doesn't leave me a lot of room. There's like a super duper heavy blowing raining storm i might get some condensation touch like it might push in and touch like that but i don't think so the only annoyance was uh i i had the tarp the other side of the tarp came across and it takes up a big piece of the deck so you got to climb out from underneath it all that stuff and one of them went to the eye hook on the door here so that relied on the door staying closed which it did and the other one came across and it didn't bunch quite right so i had one to the trolling motor and then one to the eye hook up there and that was enough to keep the entire thing pulled tight and dry chris on the other hand slept in the cabin and he slept on top of there oh hey jim hey, a little privacy oh sorry i didn't see you on the john there uh we'll we'll leave you to do your thing right there um in peace uh that was awkward um chris slept on top of the chart table somehow and didn't even bother to get out the air mattress he just was curled up on top of there. But we survived, so we'll break it all down and see if we can't catch a fish. <coughs> oh, somebody's getting eaten. <coughs> Let's go fishing. It's in the back. Yeah. We have not tried this yet, so let's see. And we're away. Let's 
put on one of my uh, new dragon craws. We just made these. There's a Fowler Extra video. You can check it on my Fowler Extra channel. And we got our own labels now and stuff. And uh, get them on Fowler's Make Your Mischief. Dot com. We got our dragon craw. I'm gonna go with the purple. Oh, Annie's. Let's give it a test run. You wanna see the most beautiful thing I've ever filmed? Sometimes there's so much beauty in the world. What are you doing back there, butter? Uh, Good girl. Looks sleepy. Well, yeah, the rooster woke me up so early. When are we gonna eat that thing? Look at that. Here we go. Good old whopper plopper. Almost feels like cheating sometimes. There we go. All right, that's a fish. Let's land him. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's better. Not the best bass, but, oh, there we go. Watch out, butter. Watch out. Come on, what are you doing? Watch out, I don't want you getting hooked. Oh, geez. There we go, nice bassin. That's two species on the chart for me. Let's let him go. Thank you, Lord. Nice morning bass. That whopper plopper just. Woohoo! <laughs> What'd you think of that, butter? What'd you think of that? Food? Done? It's like, why can't we eat it? Got your big one? Oh, good one. Yeah. Just a uh, one. Yeah. Good Come on. girl. Good girl. There you go. <laughs> just gluing the tip of my toe back on. Ripped it open when we were doing the test launch the other day. Awesome. The pontoon. Ah! You okay? Ah! Not yourself? No, just I just like I said, be careful of the stupid landing. Oh, Took yeah. a digger. Okay, wait. Twisted my ankle. ankle. <sighs> Sunday morning. We're out here. Caught a fish already. Let's see. What's today's verse? Psalm 51:7. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. Dear Diary, they say roosters are tough. And I suppose you'd have to be to get up at five o'clock every morning and just crow your head off like you just woke up and hit the uh, Starbucks and pounded about 15 lattes until you just can't crow anymore. And then wait five minutes and start all over again. I wonder what a tough rooster tastes like. He's not going anywhere. Ow! Ah! <laughs> no, it didn't hurt. He's got a huge comb. <laughs> okay, I'll see for it. Butter? No. Butter? No. Butter, stay. Butter. Dog, don't hunt. Butter, get that. Butter, come. Definitely scare the chicken, though. <laughs> we wouldn't lose him, that's for sure. Butter, I know that's your instinct. Butter's like, I was going to get him. Butter's like, I got this. I got this. What do you think, Butter? Nice try. Oh, come on. Not yet. Girl, we appreciate the help. Mm-hmm. She's like, aw. You guys stay. My friend's gone. That was a close call. I, we, did, we weren't ready for that yet. <laughs> uh, had a little bit of a one other thing that happened yesterday. The kayak, the way I tied up on the back, and I was talking about how they were scuffing. It chafed and broke the rope. I guess it rubbing back and forth, so. We gotta put a uh, new line on that, and then we can hit the road. One of the things that Grim sent me is a cool little knife. I like it, it's all flat on one side, sharp on the other. All right, 
and get some new line out. I really got to figure out something for next time, you know? Like a much better, like the, the little pulley thing should be like off the back on this side. Enough that it's like straight just off to the side so we could dock and it would kind of push against the dock. I'll do a little doodle right here. This is what I'm talking about. See, wouldn't that be clever? Next time, next trip. Waterworld season three, Canada. I don't know, I'm just saying that. I was, oh, the ocean. Leave in the comments below, where should we go next? What, what's the next? The ocean does sound like a really good one. There we go. And then tie it. And this, this is a square knot. Are you really doing this? Like full on? Do I need to tutorial it? Well, you just went way too fast. Well, Not everybody's right. a knot pro like I, you. Like, I got a square knot, which is just over, under, over, under, right? You can either tie like a backer knot, but if things are like silky like this is, so a backer knot, just a single other knot, and then it doesn't pull through, but this rope's so silky, so it can pull through there. So what I'll do is just like I'm splicing it, I'll throw it through, and I'll splice the tail in twice and just do an over under twice. And then it holds your tail there and you can't go bad. So you just open it up, tuck it through. And it's pretty, the rope's twistedness itself keeps that from ever coming out of there. Super solid. And then we're gonna tie it to the boat, but we're gonna tie it so that if either end of this broke, like last time I tied it on with like a pressic knot to the bow, and then when it broke, it was still knotted. One line was hanging free, but because of the pressic knot, it was still tied on with this end, and we weren't like, oh, where did our kayak go? It was still here. So I'm gonna put it right through the bow, and then I'm just gonna go around, and then I'm gonna run my line through there, now we just gotta go to the back of the boat and put it onto the, the piece. Oh, sorry, butter. Just gotta get underfoot, don't ya? And then just wind her to the back. Just cleat her off, and she's all good. And that concludes not how to tie a knot. No wait, knot. Knot knots for knot heads. <laughs> Moment to today's video, let's get out of here. Wait, I got it, I got it. Nautical knots for knot heads. That, that could be my book name. That was not a funny joke. Ah. Uh, uh -oh. oh, there we go, she fired right up. We are ready to cruise, kayak secured. We gotta get out of this shallow water. Get some gas, make our way to the locks in Sebago. Here we, excuse me, here we go. If you're just tuning in, don't forget to check out the playlist linked in the description below and check out our sponsor. Waterworld 2.0 is brought to you by 4Patriots, the maker of the solar generator I'll be using on this adventure, as well as their three month survival kit and Solo Stove, making smokeless fire pits and cooking gear that can turn you into a backyard chef. Fabric by Gerber Life, life insurance made easy right from your phone in 10 minutes or less. Wazoo Survival Gear, everyday travel accessories that I don't go anywhere without. Grim Workshop, credit card size toolkits that will unlock unlimited possibilities. And finally, Fowler's Mischief.com, where every purchase is the beginning of a new adventure. Let's get on with the video. For today's video, for Patriots, the power pack, the uh, cooler, all kinds of neat stuff that they sent us, the water filtration, but today's video, they wanted me to tell you all about their solar generator, not a power pack. I keep calling it the wrong thing. It's a solar generator. It's got an extended battery pack, and I've had a lot of power packs in my videos over the years and done a lot of neat things with them. This one's a little bit unique in the fact that all of the plugs and power outlets and stuff are all on the front and maybe that doesn't seem unique to you but i've had a lot of power packs right and some of them like 
the uh, USB-C's are all on the side, and then the, the power outlets over here are on the other side, and then the display's on one end. I really think that like having this set up in a way that it's like meant to slide into a cubby and be used. You can see how much you got going into it from your solar panel. And when you have a big load on it, like you can see here, we tested it with some stuff at home. The chop saw, the big tools, the things that usually kick off a power pack, uh, it, it did the job. One thing I did feel like during the adventure, cause we are filming this after, so I can give you my full review of it kind of, Shortly in this video, we're going to have a gear video, which is linked in the description below that talks about all the gear from our sponsors and all the gear that we use out here on this adventure. So check that out if after this you want to know more about this power pack or any of the other stuff we're using on the adventure. But for now, let me just say the the power pack really good works great. The solar panels are a bit more permanent. I, I like that about this power pack because they're like they're meant to have a long extension cord and a more permanent panel with mounting so it could be outside or they do still fold up and they're very solid and they're still compact and they go with you travel wise like on in front of an RV as you're moving from place to place. This when it's full it charges the extended battery packs at a decent rate or you can plug this input with a small cord here. Um, if you really need to divide off some power, it has to fill up first solarly or plugged into a home or a, a regular wall outlet. Before it can top this up, it has to be full here, which is cool, but if you wanna divide the unit and take this extended battery pack like we did up forward and use that to power the lights in the front, I used one of these to power the lights and during the adventure and one of these to power the, the um, Four Patriots fridge that they sent us, which between these power packs loving it we ran more devices charged more things ran more power for the trolling motors for the cameras for the for the uh, just uh, lights and uh just everything than i've ever done on any adventure and this power pack from four patriot kept up with it I also tested it on the biggest space heater I own, the biggest space heater you can pretty much buy to plug into 110 and it ran it fine. So that's the Patriot Power Gen. It's a solar generator. It fits into small spaces. It's convenient to have around. You can have it indoors because I'm like a gas generator. This thing's quiet. It doesn't put up a stink. It just puts out the power. Check out that link in the description below. It's their most powerful generator to date and you can go there, get one, and you can even get one with a payment plan so you don't have to pay all up front. So let's get back to day two of Waterworld 2.0. Oh man, we got a big wave coming. Water skiers here. But wave, we got two foot swells. The sea was angry that day, my friends. <laughs> like an old man trying to send back soup in a deli. We're gonna have to take it head on. Turn into it. Whoa! All right, we're out of the cove. I think we're gonna head for this marina here and see if we can get gas there. And maybe we'll get lucky and they have an anchor. We are down to one. That little one that I used for my main boat is kind of small. It worked great when we had nothing but just sitting in a little spot like this. But uh, if there was any wind blowing us in and stuff, I don't know how it would do. I had a third anchor. And considering how small it was and how much other stuff I brought, I should have brought it. Even if I just like sc screwed it to the side of the, the boat, decorative wise, and then been like, oh, now we need to get that out of there. Yeehaw. We landed it. <laughs> the most unwieldy thing I've ever driven. This thing is such a pig. The wind, I can feel it blowing on us and pushing us over. Uh, we just finished like two days ago. We're going down through the locks to Sebago. Today you are, the locks are closed. Today? Yeah, uh, we're They're closed? Oh my god. When are they open? Oh, probably on Monday. Really? Uh, we called like a couple days ago and, or a couple. Usually after it rains, they end up closing the next day. Call Baxter State Park? Yep. And see I'll let you know. Uh oh. Chris, we might be stuck here. Nice. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, no, it, it was, was open yesterday. Cool. It was actually closed all week. It was open yesterday. So we might be stuck here for a couple days until. Well, at least we'll have gas. Plenty of perch to catch. Yeah, tons of perch to catch. We're gonna like perch tacos, perch chowder, 
fried perch, poached perch, perch fried rice. Thanks so much for our catch and cooks. I think we're having pizza tonight. I'm gonna go start the gas. I'll go okay. check for you again. All right, we are fired up. We got our gas. We got some info about the locks. And they said too, if they come, if we come back tomorrow, since we can't make it through the lock anyways, that we can probably get uh, talk to the service department and get another anchor. So. Kind of is all working out perfectly outside of it doesn't get us into Sebago. So we're gonna go down to the lock, see if we can get some more details, see if we can't bribe the, the, the lockman to let us through. <laughs> I think sometimes I rely on that uh, saying you always hear me say in the videos, uh, better to be lucky than good. And uh, Better be prepared. Better to be prepared than lucky. Is that going to be my new saying? Better to be prepared than lucky. All right, we're coming up on the river, and it's a little wider here. I wanted to get a peek at it and see what it's like. I think I'm going to park and put out the anchor for a minute and think about how we go about this. I don't, they said to be very careful going down the river. So if you're not going through the locks, it could be the river's moving fast because of all the rain. I don't know what that means. I can see the, the markers are up here where it starts to narrow up. Let's put out the anchor, Chris. I'm gonna spin us and take us to the side and, and we'll, I'll, I'll look at what we're gonna do here. Oh, you know what? We'll take the kayaks down the river and check it out and do some fishing. Let's make some lunch first though, right? Yeah, sounds good. All right, let me bring us up a little ways. Yeah, we probably don't want to anchor. Where it's calm and we're not in the current. I don't know where all these ants are coming from. Do you see this? There's like ants all over the place. Yeah, I know, like. been taken over. But how? It's hot. Hi, Butter. You want to come in and cool off? Come here. Come here. Walk the, Walk the plank. Walk the plank. All right, ready? Come on, Butter, jump. There you go, Butter. Whee! Come on, Butter. Jeez. All right, you want to swim? It's like a drowned rat. Come on. Come on. <laughs> She's like, I want to swim back. I wonder if she could hop right up onto the plank. Come here. I got you. Come here. Come to Dad. All right, good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Her little feet keep going. <laughs> now is burger time. I gotta get into the vegetables here before they get ruined. We'll do some thyme. It's been a rough season with all the rain for the Catch and Cook garden, but we did still manage to plant a whole bunch of vegetables in between the rain, and some of them are doing okay. Parsley. Oh, yeah, until eggplant got a little chewed on. Fried green tomatoes. Oh, brain hot peppers. Cucumbers. Oh, so many yummy things. Fresh garlic. The cucumbers were the only thing that did really good this year and didn't seem to be bothered by all the rain and overcast. The tomatoes and everything else were really stunted. In fact, I think I only got about 10 tomatoes that successfully made it. The plants died right off. Some sage. Thai basil, banana peppers, I don't know what that is. Jalapeno on a couple of sliced cucumber salad, some garlic, Swiss chard. There, Vermont Wagyu brown beef, a nice burger. Wadobo burgers. Garlic. 
turmeric for the burgers. Breezy. Oh, you gonna eat those? Butter? Food? Cucumbers? Swiss chard. Amish butter log here. Put that on there. Lord, thank you for this food. Please, Lord, uh, make it possible for us to make it through the locks tomorrow or the next day and make it to Sebago, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> we can hear people cruising down there. You can make it through the locks. They're closed. What? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, those are good. That's amazing. Hmm. Hmm. That cheddar is like a homemade cheddar that's on it too. Mm. I can taste that. That's like so sharp, so rich. Hmm. I went a little further on the cook. It's not quite pink, but man, too many times lately I've gone out to eat and people make these double patted smash burgers and they just, they just, they're just messy. The bottom bun doesn't hold it together. They charge you a fortune for it. It, it tastes just a little bit way too greasy and. Excellent job, man. Mm. Finish up our lunch and go check on the locks. See what's going on. Maybe there's somebody down there because they didn't answer my call. Maybe we can get some news. At least their guesstimate on when it might be open. We haven't really covered a lot of ground today. Just kind of being here in Brandy Pond, gassing up at the top of the pond, and then heading down to the river that leads to the locks. Leaving the ship at the start of the river so we could take the kayaks down and check on the locks. Oh, doesn't she look sharp? What a beautiful rig. S S S Abigail. All right, we are going down the river. Maybe she's open. Maybe there's somebody there. Maybe we get onto Sebago one of these days. They're throwing the balance off. No, go get in the back. Go lay down. Stay. Oh, this is pretty cool. Down through here. It's like a parade ground. You people everywhere. What? Lobster trap. Lobster trap. For real? Yeah, man. Freshwater lobster. Oh! Right off the cast. No, no, no. It was moving Don't fool yourself. hard right. It was a stick. That was. We all know it. That was no stick.
Butter wants. Butter sees the ducks playing. She's freaking out. She's like, I want one to play with. Do you want one to play with? Like heck yeah. All right, there's the bridge. We're all the way down here, and the locks are just beyond it. Maybe we could pull up and ask somebody. I don't know. Hopefully, we can find out. We have had no luck on the fish, huh? White perch. It's a dead sea. All right, we got out, came down to the lock here. It seems to be a good touristy spot. All right. Here is the locks. Whew. That's crazy. So it looks like there's only a small step down right now. Oh, and there's another step down there. So from here to up there is it's like one, two, three, three feet, four feet. Well, that's a stinker. We we're hoping to get through, and I was hoping at least there'd be somebody in the booth. But I got that call, and hopefully they open it back up tomorrow or the next day. Not so much though if it keeps raining. Even though I didn't get the answers I was looking for, it was still worthwhile to see the locks up close and learn about them. They were built in 1830, over 190 years ago, and they are one of the last surviving hand-operated locks in the United States. When traveling through them, boats come down the way Chris and I did, having to stop and wait for the worker to pause all the on-the-road traffic, crossing the Songo Lock Swinging Bridge. They then manually operate this giant wrench mechanism to turn the bridge 90 degrees out of the way. They then physically push this huge medieval looking beam to shut off the gate behind the incoming boat to keep the river water out. The pulley system is then used to slide another gate that drains the water from where we are in Long Lake down to the Songo River level that connects to Sebago. So much water is transferred that the water level lowers about five feet down. Once the internal depth matches the other side, the beam is pushed again to open the second gate all of which can be done in reverse if you wish to go the other direction, but we're still hoping that we can take the SS Abigail down. Attention anglers. I'm gonna see if there's anything in here. On the sign over there, it says lake trout have to be a certain size, so we're in the area of uh, Sebago, you know, this running down is Sebago. Maybe some lake trout would run up here to the dam would catch on. Got to be a fish in here somewhere, huh? Stop. Not at all a chantrel. Hey, a chantrel. The is. world's tiniest little chantrel and its little brother. A couple more right here. Little teeny ones. I'll leave that one. Too small. <laughs> Somebody's getting one bite of chantrel on their pizza tonight. There's another little one. <laughs> We're having chantrel's pizza. There's got to be more in here. Oh, there's a nice. Oh, look at that. There's an couple of bolites. Ooh, they're looking a little ragged, but hey, we want mushrooms on our pizza. You're gonna... Beggars can't be choosers. All right, no luck on the locks, but we did find some mushrooms, so we can do our catch and cook pizza tonight. I think it's time to head back to the boat and uh, figure out where we're gonna spend the night. Try to get to bed early. Er, ish, now. I could practically go to bed now, I think. I'll give it all I had. <laughs> yeah? Look at that. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, some big ones up there. I my hat. So we're paddling back and we we're joking about, hey, look for mushrooms and just seen a whole bunch of chanterelles up the hill. For sure, Shan? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're positive. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah, I believe you. You yep. taught me how to harvest black trumpet. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you, Lord. 
Every day something new. Fish tacos yesterday. Oh, are you finding more under the needles? Oh, yeah. Oh, score. I mean, we can have omelets in the morning with chanterelles. We can have steak and chanterelles. We can have shrimp and chanterelles. Chicken stuffed with chanterelles. Lasagna and chanterelles. Perch and chanterelles. Hey, right huh? <gasps> yes! Yes, 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 yes! Did you fart too? No. Oh, this must be the gas. Look at her. She's so comfortable. Butter, you're doing good. She's like super comfortable in the boat. She can stand anywhere. Here comes Chris. Oh, there's a bear! Look at it. Majestic bear just watching over the river looking for the salmon. You ready to be back onto the boat, Butter? Home sweet home. We made it. I don't see my towel hanging from the top anymore. Great. I shouldn't have hung it up there. I need to uh, make some clothespins or something. Low in the bow for some reason. Could have sworn during the sea trials it wasn't, but... Well, yeah, I guess it wasn't. And then we loaded all that wood on, so... Maybe we need to move some more wood to the back. Or we should just make a pizza in the pizza oven tonight. And then we'll have used up some of the wood and it'll float better, right? Let's make some. I gotta take a swim first. I am hot after all that. Then we'll make some pizza. Go. Good girl. Good girl. What do you think, Butter? You want to go for a dip? She's pretty worn out from all of her adventuring today. I'm going for a dip, though. Ooh. Did I scare ya? I think we're gonna move lodgings, go back up towards town, try to explore some other fishing on the other side. We did hear from some people when we passed them down there about cusk, cusp, cusk, 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 cusk. cussing fish. Um, so they're kind of like a burbot, which, uh, you know, if you've seen Greg's video of his Rocky Mountain bushcraft, poor man's lobster, and I've always wanted to catch one and I haven't yet. So we might go up there and try to night fish. You just missed it, dude. What? Massive lightning strike on the hill there. Ooh. Like it went from that dark cloud line all the way down to the mountains. Really? That was crazy. So I mean, we'll <laughs> scoot up there, find some cover, and hunker down for the night. We passed a little island on the way down through Long Lake, and I thought it'd be fun after we packed up to head up and back under the Naples Bridge and spend the night there. It seemed pretty sheltered, and if we made it through the rain, we'd be pretty comfortable. Chris said that last night when he was sleeping down there that the uh, it was leaking through the bolts, and we didn't actually seal underneath it here because we weren't sure if we we're gonna have to take this down to get under the bridge. And my original plan was to hinge it, and then we'd have like two key bolts, but because we didn't do that and we did regular bolts, it was leaking down through the bolts and dripping. So where he, where he was going to sleep is why he slept up on the chart table, I found out now. So we got to cock it, which is not something I want to do. I put a bead of silicone here. It's going to make my paint job be a nasty mess and it's always going to pill up anytime I try to put more paint on. But we're not a fancy yacht. We're a pirate ship. So we do what scallywags do. We're going to cock it. Oh, that's such a mess. That's so gross. Oh, look at that horrible, beautiful console all just like goobered in. I don't know what's worse, that cocking job or my toe. Ugh, leave it in the comments. Good. Here we go. Butter and Chris are both worn out. I've worn them out. They're ready for naps. We'll go back up through the bridge and park up by the island we passed um, when we came down through the bridge. And uh, it'll be dark by the time we get there, but we'll be in a new place with new adventures. Maybe we can still make a pizza tonight. If not, we're both kind of just fried and and the storm is coming. 
but it is kind of clearing up a little bit past there so it might just skip over us oh I feel droplets What do you think, Mr. Rooster? You ready for the rain? No. No? Me neither. How about you, Jim? Feeling a bit exposed up here. Okay. We're definitely plowing. Are they completely under, like, yeah. constantly? Yeah. We're plowing more than before for some reason. We never did move more weight to the back. All I could think of that would cause that would be as if we had some water in one of the pontoons and as we're going forward and it starts to tip forward all that water moves to the front and it d increases the weight up forward we lose some more buoyancy and causes us to plow more I'm worried about that maybe we'll have to have her checked out at the marina tomorrow I'm concerned Foul wind a blowing. The surface of the water is very turbid here. Give me the heebie jeebies. Lord, keep us safe. I feel like this is where the flag would flip around and go the other direction and you're like, uh-oh, that's it. We're screwed. There's a little glimpse of blue skies in the sun right there. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Keep an eye on it, trust God for it, and keep cruising. so wet out here, even the ducks are getting wet. Some heavy droplets. Woo! It wouldn't be an adventure if it was easy. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh! Me, myself, and the Chris and the chicken butter on the boat. We're headed to Lord knows where. And hopefully we continue to float. Yee-hoo! I gotta make my own like pirate. Yee-hoo! That's almost like a yodel. We started out with two pontoons and we added lots of wood. And then it got so heavy that we thought we add a third. Reinforce the trailer. So it would be towed. Made our way to Long Lake in southern coastal Maine. Is it coastal when you're in that Long Lake area? Lost our first anchor on that first day. Now we're down to a tiny one. Hopefully we don't drift away. Yo-ho, getting wet, yo-ho, this is a mess. I like your awning. <laughs> it fits. Unless the water's gone up by two feet, we'll fit. Woo! Here we go. Everybody duck. Okay. Got it. What do you got this for? This for like a video? Yeah, you too. Oh, oh, that's yeah. Cool. That's cool, bro. You got to get the feet out. Yeah, yeah, get us on it. Yo! Yeah. Woo! Nice shit. Oh, it's wet on this side. It's wetter on this side of the bridge than on the other. 
I don't see eight feet of water. Thought we'd stop and fire the cannon as the sun goes away and the light. We are almost to our final destination. Leaving civilization for parts unknown or at least parts a little less busy, maybe? Beautiful sun going down, and the adventure going on. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. It would have been nice to have one more week to plan and to make sure everything was just right. But we're nailing it so far considering outside of losing an anchor and stubbing a toe so badly I ripped the end of it off and uh, you know nobody's died speak for yourself I got like four sprained toes from slipping on the floor that we didn't paint with the sand but other than that we're nailing it hey butter you're gonna come out of the cabin now that we stopped you were hiding in there weren't you you little crazy thing on the crispier side but ha I made four doughs so I could uh, make a mistake or two but it looks like that's gonna be more than enough that's awesome I thought for sure I'd ruin one or something but this thing is so nice I really like this not bad for my first pizza on it oh, oh that one came out really good now, let's see, I pushed it back too far against the pan. 
the edge there, but there's nice crispy bubble there. Crispy's on the edge. Ooh wee. You eat any of those mushrooms yet? Oh yeah, I already had a slice accidentally. <laughs> it accidentally fell into my mouth when I was cooking. It was. Oh whoa! Uh, watch oh, out! Oh, 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 watch out! Mouth! Oh my Careful. goodness! I just dropped some bacon butter. Bacon. All right. Lord, thank you for this food, and thank you for the chanterelles and this wonderful day. In Jesus' name, amen. Cheers. Take <laughs> it. Mmm. <laughs> it's straight tomatoes on the bottom mm -hmm. um, with uh, pe sautéed peppers and onions mm -hmm. for the sauce. I didn't have any tomato sauce. Um... <laughs> Uh, you got your you got your sauce. That, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just good. like I was like I thought it'd be fun just to have just yeah, no, raw good. stuff, and then bacon and the chanterelles, and it's That's like awesome. The flavors work together so well. Mm. And what it does to that dough by cooking it at like six hundred something degrees. This thing's so cool. I don't know. It used to be my favorite pizza is the deep dish. Did I ever make you one of my deep dish? I don't think so. Oh, the uh, Chicago style. Yeah, I make it deep dish with rosemary in the oil and. Mm. It's good though. It's excellent. Tastes really good, but I just woke up. <laughs> Pizza for breakfast though. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, take it back to bed with you if you want. I'm gonna set up my bed and go to bed. Okay. After this. Mm. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> trying to see if you guys can see this, but the lake is just full. Of white perch, like they just, look like little baby stripers. Like so many of them. I don't know if it's our lights that attracted them or what. They're just, they're all like four to, or well, more like two and a half to five. Maybe that one might be six inches right there. Hey, buddy. It's crazy. It's just as far as the eye can see. Like everywhere I moved to. Okay, maybe not everywhere I moved to. Everywhere the light is touching or something. Okay, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. You gonna eat in bed? <laughs> yes, right. I might have a little munch <laughs> All right, another beautiful day of adventuring. Everything's going pretty good. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, like I was talking about the boat going and plowing down in a little bit, and it was kind of freaky. Well, like later, um, when we came the rest of the way up from Naples to finally to this point, like it was calm after the storm and, uh, it wasn't a problem. So I, I th almost like the chop and everything else, the wind blowing against us, it was making it dig in somehow. So we'll have to see. Um, I think definitely when we get to Sebago, hopefully the locks will open tomorrow. We'll be able to... Uh, we'll, well, we have to be, be very careful. We won't be traveling across big open waters, you know, during the daytime. We'll have to be up early and uh, go to bed early so that we can travel before it gets choppy. Otherwise, we won't be stuck in a place for a whole day or start out to some adventure and turn back. So, praying that they open the locks. You know, there wasn't that much rain today. <sighs> really want to get down there and then Tuesday you know two days from now there is a whole bunch of rain coming so if it's the rain that's keeping the locks closed that's not good that it could be really bad so all right I'm off to bed it's midnight a little bit earlier this time see you in the next one. Oh, they're out don't forget to check out our sponsors, Solar Generator from 4Patriots. If you want some quiet, off-grid, clean energy, check it out linked in the description below.